MSI sent me their Z270 Gaming M7 board. It's one of the higher end boards in the lineup and it's actually pretty awesome. As usual, all the new features are on the back of the box, so the Game Boost, uh, RGB Mystic Lite, DDR4 Boost if you're interested, and the Audio Boost Pro, uh, and that's a lot of boosting in here, but uh, yeah, either way, inside the box you get the usual stuff, so the uh, motherboard, the motherboard manual, driver disc, case badge, rear IO shield, SATA cables, and an LED extension header, and of course, as you can see, the board is very stylish as well. Besides the stylish features, uh, one thing to note about the board is it actually uses an 8-pin and a 4-pin CPU power uh, connector, so uh, you will need a power supply that has uh, that functionality to be able to use the board. You also do have a debug display at the top of the board as well as some indicator LEDs to work out what's wrong, and of course you have loads of 4-pin uh, PWM fan headers uh, littered across the board. You also have an M.2 shield as well as three M.2 slots next to the reinforced PCI slots on the board, uh, which is actually a very interesting thing. It has a uh, sort of thermal layer underneath to keep NVMe SSDs nice and cool. Of course, just below the CPU socket is the first M.2 slot, which for some reason has reinforcing or what they call steel armor. This is a very strange thing because M.2 slots just require next to no force. They're obviously not very heavy, so this is a very strange one. It's mostly aesthetic. You also have obviously the middle M.2 slot. Uh, and the one down at the bottom, as well as a U.2 slot as well. The big red button that you see at the bottom there is actually the Game Boost dial, and allows you to auto overclock your CPU, which is a very nice and very easy procedure. It does go all the way up to 11, which is kind of uh, cool, kind of fun, um, but uh, I will talk about this a little bit later as well. Just above the U.2 port you have 6 SATA ports for your storage needs, above that you have the BIOS flashback button if you want to revert your BIOS to an older version, and above that you have the USB 3.1 front panel header, which we saw I believe on the Gigabyte Gaming 9 as well as the ASUS Maximus uh, code board. Of course, because it's 2017, you do have your RGB header for your LED strips that you can plug in uh, and also use the extension if you want that comes in the box. And otherwise, uh, the Ruro is also quite nice with USB 2.0, USB 3.1 and Type-C, Gigabit Ethernet and a very nice audio setup as well. You also have a sideward USB 2 port for the BIOS flashback. Uh, and once you plug in the motherboard, you can see that it is going to be fairly uh, bright and outlandish. Not quite as bright and outlandish as Gigabyte's offerings, but a little bit uh, you know, more than ASUS's ones. Uh, and otherwise, Otherwise, it is a very stylish motherboard that I actually do quite like the look of. Talking about the BIOS, it's actually a really nice, very refined experience. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a second, but overall it's uh, just a really, really nice experience. Very easy to use in both the easy mode and the advanced mode. Overclocking is awesome and you have the overclocking profiles as well. You can use the hardware monitor to change the uh, fan speeds and that sort of stuff. And my favourite feature has to be the Board Explorer. It does a really great job and makes uh, you know using your motherboard very, very easy. I think MSI's BIOSes are my personal favourites here. They're very easy to use, very intuitive. They make everything just very simple, which is really nice. Uh, I think ASUS and Gigabyte have the best... Uh, I think ASUS has the best overclocking settings. Uh, Gigabyte has the best overall detail in the options that you can choose from. But MSI just makes the whole experience just a lot easier. For example, you have the boot menu, uh, the, the boot priority menu as just icons that you can drag around on both the easy mode and the advanced mode. It's just a very nice thing. Also, the Board Explorer feature is fantastic for seeing exactly what's plugged into each USB port, each uh, PCI lane, SAS port and all that sort of stuff. Stuff. So that's actually really nice. And as I said, uh, well, I think ASUS probably has the best overclocking settings, uh, or at least easy overclocking settings. Here, but has the best detail. The MSI just makes it the easiest to use, and I think it's my personal favourite. Although obviously that will depend on uh, you know what you prefer. One thing I would like to make a note on, on especially the overclocking front, is that the uh, auto overclocking dial on the bottom uh, is actually a little bit dangerous. I'm using an Intel i7 7700K, uh, running at obviously stock frequency of 4.2 and boost. 4.5 with the, the voltage being 1.3 volts and the maximum recommended voltage Intel recommends here is 1.45 volts otherwise you risk uh, you know damaging the chip electron migration between the transistors and all that sort of stuff so uh, potential for danger here obviously depending on who you ask anyway uh, and this chip uh, this board when I turned it to 11 which of course if it goes to 11 I have to test it to 11 uh, and this uh, overclocked my chip to 5.2 gigahertz which is a very nice very respectable overclock but it was running at 1.509 volts, which is actually pretty high. And as, 
as you can tell, past the sort of a danger zone as such, or at least past the recommended uh, voltage. So um, personally, I'd like to see a bit of a sort of safeguard built in the year so that it doesn't exceed that maximum voltage. But otherwise, it is still a very nice feature and uh, does uh, a very good job of making a, a stable overclock. So while it is a little bit dangerous, uh, if they implement that safeguard, it's a really nice feature that not many other people have. On the IO front, I think it's actually quite impressive. The triple M.2 slots are obviously making use of the extra four PCIe lanes available on the Z2 70 platform uh, and otherwise as I said it is quite impressive I do quite like the uh, heat shield that they come with on the central m.2 port there uh, obviously uh, NVMe SSDs do get quite hot so having that heat shield with a thermal pad underneath is a nice feature and while I understand that you know most users probably will only be using one uh, m.2 SSD if anything uh, it is a little bit strange that they include three m.2 uh, slots but only one heat shield just to make it clear this board doesn't have Wi-Fi which means uh, for the large majority of you that keep asking on these sorts of motherboard reviews uh, this may not necessarily be the one for you although of course you can just pick up a, a PCIe or a USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter if you prefer and otherwise uh, as I said it's a very nice very stylish board it's a slight bit more tasteful on the LED front than uh, Gigabyte's offerings uh, although it is still you know quite uh, bright as such a uh, lot of LED zones and of course you can control those in both software and in the BIOS so would I recommend this motherboard uh, I think so it's a very nice option of course the BIOS is fantastic it's very stylish uh, and while I don't understand why they put steel armor on the M.2 slots which are you know they may as well be zero insertion force uh, kind of you know sockets these days uh, and I don't really understand why uh, MSI and Gigabyte are reinforcing RAM slots either uh, it is still uh, if nothing else fairly stylish so I guess that's something but uh, yeah overall I, th I think I do recommend it in terms of scoring I'm going to go with a 4 for 5 money a 5 for performance and a 4.5 for functionality. Uh, I'm going to go with a, uh, a 5 for styling. I actually really do like this one. And I think I'm going to go with a 4.5 for Tech Team GB score and a gold award. As I said, this is a very nice, uh, fairly easy to use, fairly functional motherboard. Especially a very nice BIOS. And it's actually really easy to overclock with a dial on the bottom. And especially if they were to implement that sort of uh, you know limiter at the end uh, for the voltage, then I would definitely recommend this. Uh, especially if you just want a really nice, easy overclocking experience. So I guess that's kind of that really. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to check out the pricing or pick one of these boards up, I'll leave a link to Overclockers UK and a worldwide Amazon link so that you can uh, check that out. And obviously, if you're planning on buying anything else, please do use the more general Overclockers UK or Amazon affiliate links in the description down below. It genuinely does help me keeps these videos going and all that sort of stuff and uh, yeah other than that as I said feel free to subscribe follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well for more updates and news and all that sort of stuff and uh, yeah I guess that's kind of it thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope you found it useful and informative and we'll see you all in the next video